Now, in this video, we're going to talk about a very nice concept. And this concept is, of course, your Rayleigh's criterion. Now, what has what is Rayleigh's criterion, basically? Now, I have two sources here. Let's call this S1. Let's call this S2. And this is some sort of a slit or aperture. And this usually could be your eye or some telescope lens or something like that. Okay, usually. Right? And then you are going to form some images on the screen behind. So for your eye, this would be your retina. For a telescope, it could be this uh, screen at the back of the lens. Now, really is trying to say at what point will you be able to properly distinguish these two light sources as two separate light sources. And so according to really, these two light sources would form images on the screen over here. And he says, that if the images are formed in, a, in such a way that the maximum of one image here is directly on top of the first minimum of the other image, and of course the same for the other one, so the maximum of this image here is directly on top the first minimum of the other image, then this is the condition where your light sources are what we call just resolvable, just uh, resolvable okay and when this happens the angle subtended right here theta is called the critical angle theta c and really found that this angle was equal to the wavelength of the two light sources coming in they have to be identical light sources of course divided by b your slit width over here by definition so this is very interesting, but so what is the implication of this? Well, it means that in actual fact, we can use this critical angle to see if we can resolve any two identical sources simply by calculating what theta actually is depending on two things. Number one, how far the light sources are from your slit and also the separation between the light sources. Now, based on X and D, as we have written over here, we can calculate another angle here, which we will call theta actual, which trigonometrically speaking is approximated as X over D, okay? Because theta is usually gonna be quite small. And so what we need to do finally to check whether any two sources are resolvable, we have to compare theta actual and the critical angle as determined by lambda over b. And so if it is the case that theta actual is larger than this critical angle, or in fact equal to, then we say that the images are resolvable. You can see them separately. Okay. And of course, if theta actual is less, then this uh, critical angle as determined by Rayleigh, then you may not, you may not resolve them and you cannot see them separately. This is very, makes a lot of intuitive sense, right? Because this is basically saying that if theta actual is large, you've got a better chance of resolving them. And think about what that means, right? A large theta actual either means D is small, so you're going to be close to the sources, so when you're close to two sources, you can definitely see them separately or they are very, very far apart, which also makes sense. So this is really criterion. It checks whether any two sources can be resolvable or not.